Hey guys, Dr. Dex here. Today I'm gonna to talk to you about a brand new, look how shiny and new this thing is. This is the new DeWalt cordless belt sander, DCW220. I haven't even used it yet. Look at that belt, it's flawless. We'll talk about the belts too in a minute because I have a special belt I like to use on this belt sander. This is my old reliable right here, but before I get into this video, click that subscribe button as still only 18% of you subscribe to this channel. What does it matter with these people, Calvin? I don't know either. Hit subscribe, okay? Thank you. This machine right here, this tool, this is one of my top five tools. I use these over and over and over and this particular belt sander this brand this model is really the only one i use i've only i've been using these for over 15 20 years since they came out i fell in love with it i like the way it has a smaller head right here so i can get into tighter corners with it it's been a very good belt sander i've owned about 10 of these i would say uh, after i break one i would go buy another problem is now uh, when you go to buy another you can't just go to the store and buy one, they're no longer made. So I have to go to my Instagram community or eBay and find another belt sander to replace the one that is broken. So this is like number seven, I think. I have, I have two more on reserve in my shop or in the trailer in case this one breaks or when this one breaks because they wear out. I use these for hours upon hours upon hours. This has been an amazing belt sander and I really like it. It's called the DW433. And I put on this one, I put a 25 foot extension cord and I cut it and I wired it into the switch so I could use it in, I could just plug it right into the side of the house and use it for most of my detail work that I need for the belt sander. Uh, the reason I use a belt sander a lot, uh, because I'm constantly, uh, whenever I cut a curve on a deck, I need to sand end grains a lot to get that curve to be perfect. You can't, it's really hard to cut a perfect circle or an obtuse circle or whatever you want to call it. A lot of times guys will say, oh doctor, how come you're just not putting a compass on a end of a board and using a router? Well, in theory, that's great. But is your deck board that you bent perfectly fit to that curve? Unless you're bending on site, it's not going to be. So I always draw, I always bend my boards, draw them on the deck, cut that curve out, and then sand them into the board so the board fits really nicely up against the cut end of the decking. Another thing I do with my belt sander is I shave material a lot with it to get things to fit properly. So I might overcut something by an eighth of an inch because I'm trying to install something on a curve or maybe I'm just overshot something a little bit. I'd rather be a little too long than too short. If a board's too short, what are you gonna go out and get the board stretcher? Yeah, we've all heard that joke, right? No such thing. And so I would prefer to sand in my corners or the that part to get it to fit versus cutting it and, and risking that it's going to be too short because sometimes it is I don't care how good you are on a chop saw or with your skill saw there's going to be times where you just it doesn't fit and instead of taking that board back down and trying it all over and recutting it which I've done a thousand times as well I'll bring my belt sander up and try it out so the reason I'm kind of excited about this particular tool is it's cordless so the new belt sander is cordless. It's a little bit different design with the head and how the head goes on with the belt. And I'm using a ceramic belt. So let's talk about that. Ceramic belts, and I'm using a 36 grit. So I need to take a lot of material away quickly usually, but it still has enough of a fine finish for me for what I'm doing that it's gonna get covered up. You're never gonna see it. So I like these Gator ceramic belts. Um, I think I got these at Lowe's. And I just buy the 36 grit. I'm not really interested in the 80 or 100. They clog up pretty easy with PVC. You'll notice that the, the head on this belt sander is bigger. And they're about the same size as the drive. And then there's just a, a spinning head. And the spinning head's the part that when you, when you loosen the, or detension the belt sander, that's the head that moves back and forth to create the tension you need for the belt. Then there's a little knob on this side that will adjust how far in and out the belt is when you run the sander. So I usually put my belt pretty tight to the inside. I don't like my belt hanging out too far. As you apply a lot of pressure, if you're trying to sand something, the belt can start to walk on you and you might need to make another adjustment to keep that belt running true 
on the track. There is a speed controller knob right here, but I always leave mine on full. On Like this one goes up to five, I'm leaving it on five. And I just put a brand new charge 12 amp hour battery because that's probably what I'm gonna be using. And there is this convenient dust uh, collector and we'll promptly remove that and not use it. I'm not crazy about dust collection. When I'm belt sanding, maybe in certain circumstances, I'll leave this in my toolbox. And if I have to, I'll bring it out and collect the dust. So now you can kind of see what we're looking at as far as the size and the heights. There might be a couple instances where I won't be able to use this sander because this head's gonna be too high. If I'm trying to sand something out and I'm in a position, I've modified this belt sander to fit into uh, certain areas when I'm belt sanding. This actually has a movable handle. This handle can be moved to the top or to the front. This one does not. It's a built-in handle and it's not. you're not able to move it. So it is what it is. It's just sitting there and that's your option. So. That's fine. For this particular video, we're going to clamp up a piece of PVC because this is this is what I want to use this in is a real test, like a real environment of what I'm going to do. Unfortunately, I don't have any curves to, to cut to show you how I would sand those in, but I can show you how I'd sand out an end grain and we'll see how much material this will move at what speed and, and what accuracy and see if it's anywhere close to this sander right here. I don't know what to expect because I haven't used this tool yet I haven't practiced with it or anything. I thought I would just wait and do it really raw in video. So that's why it's a brand new tool, brand new belt. Uh, DeWalt did send me this tool, by the way. I didn't purchase it. So let's check it out and see what it does. All right, so what I'm gonna do is just clamp up this piece of Azek, which is what we're building this deck out of. All right, so this end grain on this board is pretty gnarly. I'm gonna draw a new line, and then I'm gonna try to sand up to that line. And I'm gonna sand out of square. I'm gonna draw the line out of square, and I'm gonna show you as far as removal, how much this belt sander will remove material. Uh, this is not a hard material, so it's easy to sand, but it's what I do. So for me, this is like a real world test. I need to know how well this this tool will sand out this board. So I'm gonna go ahead and be, I wanna be accurate. I'm gonna grab a square and I'm gonna go ahead and draw a line, like I said, out of square. And we're gonna take some serious material out of this board and let's see what happens when we do that. And this is really the one test I need to do to, do to know if I'm gonna be able to bring this tool up upstairs and use it on the deck, or if I'm just gonna take it back to the shop, or if I'm just gonna leave it on the table, you know? Um, Cause I know I already got a tool that'll work, but the convenience of this, and it is convenient, is the fact there's no cord. All right, so there is a, a nice little button right here. That's a locker, so it'll trigger, it'll lock the trigger so that it'll just stay on so I don't have to sit here and hold the trigger tight. So that's usually what I would do. I'd pull the trigger and then I'd push the button and it'll just keep running. All right, so here we go. All right, so there's always a little bit of a uh, fray on the end of the board. That's sanded out really nice. Sometimes, if this is the face of the board, I may do a back bevel when I'm sanding this out. So I might slightly give it a little bit of tilt. It depends on what I'm trying to fit and what's gonna be exposed and what you're gonna see at the end of the install. So I'm gonna go ahead and sand that out a little more. And that'll be it. All right, guys, and just for giggles, I went and plugged in old Reliable. Now this belt is much older. It still has some pretty good grit on it, but you can see that it's been used. But I just, for reference sake, I wanna show you the difference in speed. This one goes up to six. And let's see how fast I can take off this material. Uh, I, probably, I got a pretty good chunk here I have to remove. So let's see as far as speed goes, what the difference is in these two. All right, here we go. I uh, probably would remove a couple seconds off of that with a brand new belt. So there's your speed comparison from a cordless tool to a corded tool and where the power delivery is between those two. If I'm having to sand lots of footage, I'm probably gonna grab my corded belt sander and use that. But for finish work, for tight work, for onesie twosie stuff, I'm definitely gonna take this up with me and use it for different applications. When I have to sand out a corner or make something fit really tight, there's nothing wrong with using this. It takes a little bit longer, which actually can be a benefit when you're doing finish work. If you're taking off too much material too rapidly, you can actually over sand your, your piece and then you're in trouble because you just made it too short. 
or you're gonna have to stand the other side to, to shorten it up to make it fit. So not necessarily a bad thing to have when you're in that situation. So uh, not a bad tool. There's not much more to it. I think as we use it more and more, you'll see us using it in the videos and then I'll probably mention, hey, this is that belt sander we reviewed a while back. Go back and check it if you haven't seen it, if you've been following along. Here's what my thoughts are now. Thanks for watching this video, guys. If you have any other questions about this DeWalt belt sander, leave them below and I'll try to answer them in a timely fashion. Thanks for watching this video. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and the bell icon to be notified when we're putting out new content. Don't forget to leave a comment below and like this video. Thanks for watching, guys. Have a great day.